Continuing our look at the variety of different organ systems in complex animals such as ourselves, we'll look at moving things around in the body, internal transport, and gas exchange. Getting in the gases you need and getting rid of the ones you don't want. To stay alive, a cell needs food coming in. Again, thermodynamics, we're losing some of that energy, so we have to constantly get new food into the cell. And for those of us that are aerobic, we need oxygen. And also we're making waste, and we need to get rid of that. Too much waste build up eventually will kill a cell. Now, if you're small enough, stuff diffuses in, stuff diffuses out, and that's good enough. You don't need anything extra after all. Your cells are making waste, so there will be more waste on the inside. It will tend to diffuse out. <clears throat> Food and oxygen, you're using that up. So there's less inside you, more outside. It will diffuse in. <clears throat> in turn, having fluid inside the body, that gives something these things can diffuse in and out. <clears throat> in and potentially move around the body as well. But if you're big enough, diffusion is not going to be adequate, especially if you're also active. And so to manage under those conditions, you need to have some sort of circulatory system, a way to transport <clears throat> these things, whether it's oxygen, nutrients, food bits, molecules there, hormones signaling molecules in the body. Bring these around to the cells that need them and take the waste away and get rid of them. So circulatory system is necessary for organisms to get very big. Here's an example or a couple of ones that are simple and small enough that you don't need a particular circulatory system. The sponges of course, they got water flowing through them, generally, or relatively thin. Mm, that's all they need. The cnidarians, things like jellyfish, hydras, <coughs> comb jellies, flatworms, nematodes, <coughs> a variety of others. Now, jellyfish, some of them get pretty big, but a lot of that's the jelly, which is a non-living chemical layer, and so it doesn't have to be fed. <clears throat> or provide with oxygen. It's not making waste to take away. It's only the thin inner and outer lining of the body that needs anything. And okay, well, it's got the mouth, the digestive system, stuff can slosh around inside it, and that provides for the transportation there. Similarly, flatworms, well, they're flat. So it's not too hard for stuff to diffuse in and out. They can get the oxygen in, the waste out. Food, well, they do digest it, and then typically the digestive system extends widely through the body, and so food just moving around in there gets to all the parts of the body. Yep. You're in a hurry for some reason. Larger than that, you need a circulatory system <coughs> to effectively move things around. There are a couple different styles. You have open and closed circulatory systems. So we'll look at both of those. Circulation, well, you need a fluid, a fluid, something to move around. Blood, or the equivalent there. Most things with a circulatory system have some sort of pump, a heart, or equivalent there. And tubes to organize the flow, blood vessels. In an open circulatory system, such as in arthropods, in most mollusks, <clears throat> there's a heart pumping blood, but then that blood goes out open into the tubes, <coughs> excuse me, circulates as a general body fluid, and then there are holes where that will drain back into the circulatory system and come to the heart once more. So, <clears throat> say for the, our grasshopper here, Here's the heart, 
pumps blood, but then it, that goes into the general body cavity, flows around through <clears throat> it rather than staying within defined vessels. Similarly, in this clam here, again, you've got a heart. It's even a pierced heart. How romantic. Well, it's the intestine piercing it. Maybe that's not so romantic. Anyway, <clears throat> heart pumps blood out, goes into the body. You also have pumping into the gills <clears throat> and back to get the oxygen. But certain other animals, including ourselves and other vertebrates, have a closed circulatory system. <clears throat> blood moves around staying inside these vessels. Most but not all of these have a heart or multiple hearts. <clears throat> and so as these fluids move around, <clears throat> the <clears throat> blood carries the gases, nutrients, and it gets into very thin walled <clears throat> vessels called capillaries and then stuff can diffuse in and out between the capillaries and the surrounding cells. <clears throat> Vertebrates, we have rather complex circulatory systems. We have a heart, we have the blood vessels, and the blood in those. But there's also additional body fluid, the lymph. There are lymph vessels, so those are open. And there are special organs associated with it, things like the thymus, spleen, and liver that help to <clears throat> regulate the blood, make sure you've got the right amounts of different things, that type of stuff. So our circulatory system for vertebrates, we depend on them to take the nutrients that we get in our digestive system, uh, primarily being broken down and absorbed in the intestines and spread those throughout all the body to where they're needed. Also, we get oxygen in from our lungs, and the circulatory system carries that oxygen throughout all the body. Waste. Waste chemicals produced in cells get carried off and <clears throat> excreted. Hormones. These are secreted by different parts of the body, specialized organs that produce the hormones. And those have to get to the places that need to get the message from the hormone. So a lot of those are transported in the blood. Blood, fair amount it's water. <clears throat> and so it's helping maintain fluid, get the fluid circulating through the body. And if we detect blood's not doing so great, okay, we can go drink some more. And those of us that are warm blooded, birds and mammals, the blood also is warm and helps in maintaining by temperature, carrying warmth to different places, different patterns there. pH, we have buffering chemicals in the blood that help maintain the proper pH, and that helps the rest of the body as well. And the blood also contains a lot of immune cells that provide defense against various possible dangers. Within the blood, we have the red blood cells, these are specialized for carrying oxygen and also help in getting rid of the carbon dioxide. They're not as much as carbon dioxide travels with the cell. Mammals actually lose the nucleus in the mature red blood cells, so it's just carrying oxygen and can't even continue to maintain itself and will die before too long and then it's replaced by other red blood cells that we're constantly making. Again, different cells do different things. Red blood cell, basically, it's a bag of hemoglobin, which is the protein that will grab onto oxygen from the lungs and carry it and then release it as it gets to the tissues. The white blood cells, in contrast, are primarily immune system. They are several different types that have various ways of recognizing <clears throat> things that are not belonging there, such as bacteria or viruses or other potential problems and attack them in various ways. Besides circling the blood, the white blood cells are able to slip out through <clears throat> gaps between cells, like in the capillaries, and then move elsewhere in the body 
to hunt down any dangers out there. Also, in our blood, we have little cell bits in mammals called platelets, uh, thrombocytes, small cells in other organisms, and these stick to any rough edge, which shouldn't be in a blood cell, but if it's been cut, then there it is. So these are used in clotting to keep you <coughs> from continuing to bleed. It helps stop it up. 